Hello, it's Tom Donald from the London Contemporary School of Piano. Today I'm going to share with you some secrets. Secrets for playing pop music on the piano. Pop music and popular songs is one of the hardest things for so many students to crack on the piano. Why is that? We were told when we were kids and we wanted to play our favourite songs, we should go off and practice our Mozart and all of our serious music. So why is it that popular music is something that so many students struggle with? Well, there's many, many reasons for it today, which I'm going to break down and I'm going to really help you problem uh, solve these, these issues and these difficulties. And so you understand why it is when you go jump on the internet and you're looking for a run through of a particular pop song or you're looking for some sheet music, everything you seem to get and download doesn't really make any sense or it just doesn't sound like the song. I think that's the thing I hear from most people. Oh, I downloaded the sheet music to this Adele song and it just doesn't sound anything like the song. Why is that? Well, there's many reasons for it. But the first reason is the problem of our notation system and how it relates to pop music. So we're gonna talk a bit about that. We're also gonna talk about many different ways we can play pop songs and how to diagnose the right way you should be playing pop music so you get it right. And by the way, if you're a fan of our work at the London Contemporary School of Piano, head on over to our website, contemporaryschoolofpiano.com. Head on over to our site, ask for our free resources kit, which is filled with great tips and tricks that really go alongside these videos, really support your musical journey. So, pop music on the piano. Well, I'm gonna share with you first, before we start, three important tips to really get you started with playing a pop song on the piano. The first thing is chords. Chords, 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 chords. It's all about chords. No, it's not about the tune or the melody, it's about the chords, sorry. If you wanna play this music, on the piano, it's about chords. If it's a straightforward Beatles song like Let It Be, it's about playing and knowing those chords. So I've just chorded out that tune, let it be, and without the tune, just to get an overview of the piece. Now the first reason why it's so important to play the chords of these songs is that's how they were written and composed, be it on a guitar or a piano, it usually is one of those two instruments. And the thing is, where's the melody? Well the thing is, the melody was never intended to be on the piano. It was meant to be a vocal melody. It was a melody that McCartney and Lennon were singing. And it's about the vocals, and the vocals is very different. There's words in the music. So putting the, the melody onto the piano straight away creates a lot of problems. So the first thing you want to do, if, particularly if you're just getting to grips with playing some tunes on the, and pop songs on the piano, you just want to start playing the chords first, chording out the song. I'll give you another example, another great song to start with. And again, if you head on over to our website, contemporaryschoolofpiano.com, we have a resources pack with mixture exercises in them where chords are being mixed up in enticing patterns that are used in a whole bunch of pop songs. And one really good exercise in there is mixture part two, where we have chord patterns like these ones, C major, B flat major, F major, C major, C major, E flat major, F major, C major, and there's a whole bunch of other patterns on those exercises and they're there to just help you get used to chords. So do head on over to the site and get these materials to support you to help you out. We're helping students from all over the world with this stuff. So that's your first step. Learn to live without the melody. Sing the melody. If you really miss the melody, just sing the tune. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, whatever the song might be. Sing and play. It's really good for your holistic for musical development. Very, very important. So that's our first step. Sing and play, but play the chords. It's all about the chords. 
It's about nothing else but that. Now, the second step. And before I get to the second step, let me start with this song that was written by Bob Dylan, but covered by Adele. And it's To Make You Feel My Love. This song has beautiful chords in there, lovely slash chords. So I'm first going to start by chording it out, and then I'm going to move to the second step. B flat, F over A, A flat, E flat over G, E flat minor, B flat, C, F, B flat. Repeats again. So there, that's that's the feeling of that progression. It's a lovely progression with the descending bass line. And yeah, you can sing along. The whole world is on your case. So we've got that chord progression highlighting the song. So the next step is groove. Isn't melody still? We're still pushing melody back a bit. We're withholding that at this point. Because I'm going to talk about when we add melody and when we don't add melody. So groove. What is groove? People are always a little bit confused about this dark art of groove. Well, groove is basically a rhythm pattern that builds up a song. It gives the song a beat. So many people refer to music as something with a beat. Oh, I love the beat of that song. They're often referring to the groove. And the groove just creates this amazing feeling in the music um, that's enticing and it is so important when you're playing pop music to have a sense of groove without groove your chords are meaningless and there's no space for the melody so groove is really really important so i'm going to show you how groove can really transform a chord progression and that's really what you want to know so i'm going to get these chords from this adele song well it's a bob dylan song that adele uh, reimagined and I'm going to change the groove from a simple one, two, three, four, which I was just playing, right? I was just doing that. And I'm going to turn it into a dotted rhythm. It still has four beats in the bar, but I'm distributing the beats inside the bar differently. So it sounds like this. Two. hear how that just transforms the feeling of the music. I'm going to show you another groove that's, that's really transformative. And I call this groove, a lot of these grooves don't even have names because they don't teach this at school. Crazy, hey? So, um, well they teach it at our school. I tell you what, we teach groove. We're fanatical about groove. This is just lovely chord progression from a Coldplay song. I think we've got a tutorial on it on our channel somewhere. So here are the chords, beautiful chords. E flat major, B flat minor, Another bar of B flat minor, and then F minor. So I could just play it, chord it out, play it nice and straight, get my fingers around those chords. That's important to do. That's a step one, right? Okay, so this is the three plus three plus two. I'm going to break up the chord into groups of three plus three plus two. Three, three, two, like that, and then I just make it really even. I play it as eighth notes across the bar, and now I get this groove. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, da, 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 da. We'll do that down an octave. I'm going to put some eighth notes in the bass to really drive the rhythm. Real rock and roll power ballad stuff. You can 
hear how the groove just transforms the music. And it's all dependent on the style of music, you know, there's all types of grooves for all types of purposes and styles of music. And it's so important, I mean, there's nothing worse than just going to some website, downloading the sheet music, which you have to pay for, by the way, and then, and then seeing an arrangement that's like this. It's completely devoid of groove. So why are the notations of sheet music on the internet so bad, not just the internet in general, are so bad and they're nothing like the original song? People ask me this all the time. And the answer is, is because it was never written down by the original composers. The original songwriters, you know, Paul McCartney and John Lennon never wrote down with a quilted pen in their, you know, in their house, you know, let it be in perfect notation. They worked these songs out together in a studio with the band playing together. They scribble the chords on a piece of paper. I mean, Elton John, he scribbles the chords on a piece of paper where Bernie Taupin has uh, sent him the words by the post. You know, he's writing E flats and A flats and all these lovely chords above the words. The songs are worked out in a more collaborative way and everyone's working out the parts and the bass player's adding their groove and the drummer's adding their groove and everyone's putting their their little uh, you know, spin on the piece to build this collective effort. The song gets recorded and then everyone wants to play it on the piano all of a sudden and the publishers are like, oh, let's just quickly get some piano music. We'll put the melody on there. We'll just chuck the chords in and hope for the best. It's never been written out. It's never been designed to be played on a piano. So we have all these problems because the music had never, a lot of these songs don't even have piano in them. I have students approaching me all the time, can I learn this song? And they're like, there's no piano in the song, but of course we can learn this song on the piano, but we have to take the steps, so what, what, let's go over the steps again. Chords, chords come first. You've got to know your chords. So no escaping that. You'll be able to chord out the piece. Second step, groove. And if you really want to dig deeper into groove, because I, you know, I could run a full masterclass on groove, and I already have, it's the Groove Mastery Course, and it's available just from the link below. The Groove Mastery Course will really transform your understanding of groove. That's the really big missing ingredient for so many people. So you can, you can download that course for just a mere 20 pounds or 25 US dollars. It's a really a important investment for your playing if you want to play pop music on the piano, because trust me, sheet music, it's going to save you money in the long, long run, because sheet music is just, it's not going to show you any of this. So we've got groove. We've got chords, so now we need the next step, melody. So the question is, what is the context? Is this going to be a song you're gonna play with a singer? And by the way, if you don't ever play with other musicians, you should, you should maybe learn that Adele song to make you feel my love. If you know anyone who can sing, get used to playing with other people and accompanying other people. But if you insist on having a solo piano version of a pop song, then you need to get into the arrangement. And this is where there's a lot of logistics involved, and this is probably the highest level of skill needed to get a pop song that was written for a band and place it on a piano. So how do we do that? Well, there's many ways we can do that, and it depends on what the songs are. And I'll just give you a few examples of songs. So the Adele to Make You Feel My Love. The first approach we could take is put the chords in the left hand and the melody in the right hand. Now this approach can be very problematic, but it can still work. It's problematic if you play the chords too low in the left hand. It will just sound terrible. Don't do that. I mean, it's, it's going to be hard work and it won't ever sound good. But you could put the chords around the middle register of the piano. We could put the groove in there as well. So now put those chords into the left hand, and that frees me up to add the right hand. Let me try it. And that works quite well for ballads. Just a disclaimer with that, there are a lot of songs where it won't work having the left hand play the chords just because of the nature of the songs, particularly if they're really fast songs. If they're fast songs with more beat going on, 
more groove going on. The left hand has to do some groove things. It can't just be playing chords. So that's just, it's very dependent on the song and that's where you need some skill in your arrangement. But it's trial and error. And you know, using these steps, I hope this helps you identify ways of being able to play these songs on piano. So the next step, this is a bit more skilled, it's the ability, but once you learn how to do this, it will transform what you can do on a piano. You'll be able to sit down at the cocktail bar and get the tip jar out. You'll be ready for that. It's to be able, I'm gonna say this slowly because it's so important, to be able to integrate the chords and the melody together in the right hand. And I wish I could tell you it's an easy thing to do. It takes a bit of practice. You have to get good at your inversions to do this. So generally you want the melody at the top. And so I'm gonna put the melody at the top here for this song and Okay, I'll put the melody at the top, which means I'll have to use inversions in a particular way. And I'll only play with the right hand here, just to give me some right hand practice with this. And now that gives me room in the left hand to add some other rhythms and some really nice things I can do in the left hand that have octaves and fifth intervals to get some nice rolling piano effects, breaking up the chord. So that's one way I could approach that. And there are many other ways, but this is where we get into the art of arrangement. So let me give you a difficult example. And trust me, that's not easy what I just showed you, but this, a song like this would be very difficult for reasons I'm going to discuss. And it's such a simple song. It's a simple repetitive song. And it's often these types of songs that are the worst to play on piano as pop songs. So it's really ironic that this one's so difficult to make work on the piano, but you can make it work. But it is one of the harder ones, and it's Billy Joel's Piano Man. It's ironic, it's a song about playing in a piano bar. But the reason why it's hard to make a song like this work as a solo piano arrangement, as an accompaniment for another singer, it's, it's a piece of cake. It's a beautiful song, a wonderful song, one of the great songs of all time. Hey, I'm a massive Billy Joel fan, but as a solo piano piece, even, I mean, ask the question, would Billy Joel ever play it as a solo piano piece? No. He'd sing it. How, what, what is this song without the words, without all of those verses where Billy Joel tells this story? So I, you know, I have a student that comes up to me and says, I want to learn Piano Man by Billy Joel as a solo piano piece. And I just point out, I say, how important are the words of this song to you? Oh, the great words. Well, we now have to convey the words without singing them, without even telling that story. We have to somehow still tell the story. And to make matters worse, each verse has different words, but the music is exactly the same. So you're just repeating the same thing over and over and over and over again, and it's sounding really boring because you know, there's no words to tell the story. So how do we make this work? And I used to play this piece in a bar, and in piano bars all the time without singing it. So I'm going to show you how I would get a song like this to work. So you think of, you've got to think of the words now. It's nine o'clock on a Saturday, the regular crowd shuffle in. It's wonderful words, aren't they? Just tell such a story. So I'm thinking I want, I want to communicate that. So I, don't, I want it to be quite profound and simple, the arrangement. Right, the problem is it keeps doing that with other words and the song's building up. And then the next part of the verse, the singing goes up an octave, so, and the band are building up the energy. So we have to do this on the piano now. Right, and then we 
got that bit in the middle where it goes la da 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 but yes, you want to play it as a solo piano piece. So how do we do this la di di da stuff on a piano without anyone singing it? Well, I came to the conclusion you just can't. Like, you just can't. It just doesn't, you know, you can't replicate that. Uh, people around the piano going la da da di di da. So I'm now going to play it in a different style. And so this is a waltz. Not many pop songs are waltzes. And it's funny, when you play those sort of, that waltz rhythm, in the left hand on these chords, it almost feels a little classical. So I'm going to be a little bit tongue in cheek classical style and play it in a slightly Chopinist, Chopin like way. So sometimes you have to do that in the arrangement if you're playing it as solo piano. You have to reference another style of music, like classical music, to bring the piece alive on the piano. And uh, that's part of the, the theatre of what it is we're doing, is we're building up the song. And then we have the chorus, sing us a song, you're the piano man, and that, it's the same chords as the verse, so how do we give that variation? So we have to find other ways to make the music interesting, maybe arpeggios of these chords. So that's an example of one of the harder pieces to turn into a solo piano piece. And if it's really daunting for you, that idea of doing that, given the lack of even good arrangements out there, and I often refuse point blank to make written down arrangements of pop songs because it defeats the purpose of what it is I'm teaching you. But also I just have the time to be an arranger of pop songs for the piano. That's why I learned to do it on the fly through improvisation and by using these skills. But I think Piano Man's almost an exception. I probably should sit down one day do an arrangement of it just so other people can play the notes because it is one of the more difficult ones. However, you could get another piece that's sort of equally difficult in its abstract use of, of story and narrative, and that would be Hotel California. So that's a particularly difficult one because it's got the most amazing chords in it. So again, you go back to step one, practice those chords. Chord it out first, right? Don't get too far ahead of yourself. And that repeats over and over again and it builds up and the verses and the band. Is, by the way, there's no piano in this song at all. It's fine, the piano can do it all, it's fine. But the melody. the most interesting melody when you play it on a piano. So you've got to build that into the arrangement. Sometimes I just like to get songs like this that have really recognisable chord patterns that people can identify with the tune and just improvise on it. So maybe rather than even playing the melody at all, just ditch the tune and do some more groove stuff.
have some fun with this and keep grooving. I'll see you soon. <laughs>